A lot of times video games let you get away with being a bad dude. A little Grand Theft Auto here, a little kleptomania there, but sometimes actions have consequences. The following video games were happy to let you make mistakes, be a bad dude, and treat other NPCs with disrespect, but they all drew the line at letting you get away with it. Double crossing any of these characters was a one way ticket to an outcome you'd probably rather avoid. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games that punish you for double crossing characters. Number 10, leave the seagulls alone, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. It's always fairly entertaining when a game gives you the option of doing something scummy only with the full intention of punishing you if you actually tried to do it. This is absolutely the case in Metal Gear Solid 2 where you can shoot innocent seagulls, but your girlfriend Rose will be extremely unhappy about it. She goes as far as to ring you and tell you to stop hurting innocent animals, calling you a monster. If you keep dropping birds out of the sky or doing other shady things like creeping around the girls' toilets or hitting on Emma, she'll get extremely angry with you and flat out refuse to save your game. Which is probably something you're gonna wanna do, so you know, happy wife, happy life and all that. Number 9. Romancing Everybody, Persona 5 Royal Plenty of video games are happy to let you flirt your way through your roster of companions or squad mates with little to no regard to whether that's a relatively uncool thing to do. At least the majority of those games will give you some kind of consequence if you decide to date around, but nobody does it quite like Persona 5 Royal. Persona 5 Royal gives Joker a huge variety of options for romance, and while sadly neither Ryuji or Yusuke make the cut, there are nine women who are all set to fall for your mysterious outsider charms. So if for some reason you aren't immediately choosing Makoto, you'll likely take a shine to somebody. Or you can be a bad dude and romance literally all of them, because apparently you have the time between being a high school student and a phantom thief. Doing so, however, will result in you being confronted by every character you've spent your 100 plus hour game romancing. This all comes to a head on Valentine's Day, where you're forced to sit there and listen to how much you hurt every single one of their feelings, which you totally deserve. And not just because you hurt Makoto's feelings, which is quite frankly unforgivable. You'll get the chance to apologize, but if you fumble that one, the girls will beat you up to the tune of the game's stressful battle music, which is entertaining if relatively embarrassing for our boy. Sojiro does cover for you though, and your bond grows with him as a result, so that's a cute little bonus. Number 8. Being a crappy commander, Mass Effect 2 To really screw yourself over in Mass Effect 2, you're going to need to be the worst commander the galaxy has ever seen, but this list is all about being a scumbag who double crosses characters, so let's get into it. Choosing unkind and renegade options regularly, especially in your companion's loyalty missions, can result in them being disloyal to you when you need them later on, or it will lead to their death late in the game. For example, if you ignore Miranda's loyalty mission, treat her unkindly, or don't keep her in the loop, she will die in the Priority Horizon mission. Similarly, failing to help Thane find his son, or throwing Tally's father under the bus during her loyalty mission, will result in them being disloyal to you for the rest of the game. Having any disloyal squad mates during the game's pivotal and easily fatal suicide mission can result in one or more of your companions dying. So if you've been a sh friend, you can expect to say some hard goodbyes at the end of this one. Or maybe some not so hard goodbyes since it seems like you weren't that into them anyway. Number 7. Choosing Triss and Yennefer, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Joker learned his hard lesson in his 100 plus hour game in Persona 5 Royal, but if you want, you can sink a ton of time into stuffing up your relationships in The Witcher 3 if that's something you want to do. In your defense, Triss and Yennefer are both very cool and down very bad for Geralt, so you'd be forgiven for wondering if you can romance both and get away with it. Spoiler alert, you absolutely cannot. While there are plenty of other bangable characters in the game you can actually get away with spending an evening with, these two are not so up for sharing with one another. The quest It Takes Three to Tango kicks off with both women asking you to come share a bottle of wine with them. Geralt, thinking for a moment that he can in fact have it all, is advanced upon by the two women before they simply take the wine, leave him chained to the bed, and tell him off about being super shady. As if that wasn't bad enough, neither of the two women will want anything to do with you after all this, so there goes Geralt's big romance. Number 6. The Gun Trap Consequences – Until Dawn Supermassive horror smash hit Until Dawn lets you kill or save all your characters depending on your choices and skill. Those aren't the only factors that will result in life or death situations though. There's also a fluctuating relationship mechanic where characters can grow closer or further apart depending on how you have them interact with one another. 
As you can imagine, you don't really want to be on the outs with anybody in a game where literally everyone can die, and your life might actually end up in another character's hands. And this is exactly what happens between Chris and Ashley. These two have a friendship and a bit of a will they won't they thing going on, but if you decide to have them constantly throw each other under the bus and treat each other poorly, you're going to regret it. In chapter six, the two are captured by the psycho, strapped to chairs, and Chris is forced to shoot either himself or Ashley. If you aim your gun at Ashley and pull the trigger, she's understandably not impressed. While the two survive after that, Chris's fate in chapter eight will depend on whether you're in her good books. If not, she refuses to open the door for Chris when he arrives back at the lodge, leaving him out in the cold to be Wendigo chum. You get what you give, I guess. Number five, fighting without honor, Bushido Blade. While mowing down dudes in Grand Theft Auto or taking out eight Sith at once with a well-timed force storm attack in Knights of the Old Republic, it can feel like video games don't really care about being honorable when it comes to taking lives. Not so in the case of Bushido Blade though, as the 1997 fighting game puts an emphasis on upholding the code of Bushido requiring you to fight with politeness, benevolence, and decency. In the game's story mode, striking an opponent while their back is turned, doing something like throwing sand in their eyes, or attacking while they're bowing at the beginning of a match will have a huge negative impact on you. If you regularly fight dishonorably, the game will actually end abruptly with a message telling you off for your actions. It's hard to think of a punishment more brutal than a game that refuses to let you play it anymore, so let this be a lesson. Some video games will even let you have it for being unfair to the bad guys. Number four, being a bad dog owner, Haunting Ground. It's generally understood that every video game dog is a good boy, even the ones programmed to try and munch on your ankles. So it stands to reason that we should treat them all nicely, especially if they aren't trying to obliterate our health bar. In Capcom's 2005 survival horror Haunting Ground, you're lucky enough to be accompanied by Huey, who will sit alongside you, attack your enemies, and follow your instructions. The white German Shepherd isn't just loyal and cute though, he's also clever. If trained correctly, Huey can be more effective at finding items, do extra damage to enemies, and be a sneaky quiet boy when you need to hide. If you're a horrible person though, you might decide to berate Huey and abuse him, in which case he'll get really sad and the game will set you on a path to the worst ending, where Huey doesn't save you in the final confrontation and instead attacks you and protagonist Fiona ends up in a glass box, having been captured by the steward of the castle, Ricardo. And given you have to be really, really awful to Huey in order to actually get this outcome, it's a little hard to feel sorry for you. Number three, Shooting Lewis, Resident Evil 4. As is the case in Haunting Ground, it's nice to have a friend by your side when dealing with the ghoulish or undead beasties of a survival horror game, which is why usually you wouldn't want to treat them badly or shoot them. At least not shoot them three times because everybody's got to draw the line somewhere. In Resident Evil 4, you're accompanied by Louis Serra, a man who used to work for Osman Sadler, the leader of Los Illuminados. He helps you out in protecting the president's daughter Ashley for a short while when the two of you become trapped in a cabin that's beset by baddies. If you decide to turn your gun on Lewis, he'll put up with it exactly twice before a cutscene rolls where he says, Adios Leon, aims his revolver at your head and shoots Leon dead. Which like so many entries on this list is super fair enough. Number two, not so peaceful monks, Tomb Raider 2. This one is an oldie but a goodie. Back in 1997, Tomb Raider 2 brought you action adventure goodness, Lara's puzzling polygonal form, and a brutal punishment for killing innocent peaceful monks. At one point you find yourself in the idyllic Barkang Monastery, inhabited by Tibetan monks. And at some point, if you find yourself thinking, what if I just started killing people? Well, here's what had happened to you. That wandering would quickly backfire on you, because while Taylor Swift says Karma is a cat, clearly in Tomb Raider 2, Karma is a battalion of warrior monks who are none too pleased you've decided to start attacking them. While you might be able to take on one or two, if you aggro one of these guys, you'll aggro all of them, and there's no way to get them to chill out once you've decided to break the peace with them. Basically, expect to end up very dead here and begin reassessing your life choices. Number one, Bad Master Chief, Halo Combat Evolved. As quintessential video game heroes go, Master Chief from Halo is pretty darn high on the list. That's probably why if you decide to play him like a crazed murderer, Halo Combat Evolved will come down on you before you even have a chance to pop the gun down and explain yourself. In the very first mission, The Pillar of Autumn, you can technically kill off one of your squad mates. 
But if you do so, the bridge will go into lockdown and invincible marines will sink bullets into you until you've well and truly paid for your actions. As you might have guessed, there's no way to win this encounter because you really shouldn't have done it in the first place. Developer Bungie even ensured that if you somehow managed to escape the bridge after doing this, you'd be teleported back to it and you'd face that inevitable death that you probably deserved. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video games that punish you for double-crossing characters. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account, where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.